Hey guys, welcome to Job Design. Today I want to show you some benchmark performance of the new S7 Edge. We're gonna test the phone in the Geekbench and Antutu and check how the heat is dissipated. Then we're gonna put the phone in the fridge and see if that makes a difference. We're also gonna check how hot it gets during VR and charging. Let's check the temperature of the phone before we begin the benchmarks. I will say the temperature in Celsius, but you can see the values in Fahrenheit on the heat gun, so we all know what I'm talking about. As we can see, the phone is around room temperature at about 26 degrees Celsius. We'll run Antutu first. The phone was restarted just before the test, but is fully set up as my daily driver. As we can see, just a few seconds in the test, the phone got much hotter, reaching temperatures around 36 degrees Celsius at the hottest spot. I have the global version here with the Exynos 8890 octa-core processor that has a quad-core 2.3 GHz Mongoose processor and a quad-core 1.6 GHz Cortex-A53. The graphics job is done by the Mali-T880. This year's top Galaxy line includes a liquid heat dissipating solution. It's hard to say how much this helps, but the heat seems to be transferred to a big area and isn't just one extremely hot spot. If we turn the phone around, we see a more concentrated heat pattern. A teardown revealed the heat pipe is located on the front side, so this might prove it's doing a good job. Here at the back on the right to the heat spot, we just have the battery, so it's a bit cooler. Even at the back, the temperatures reach up to 36 degrees Celsius. The final score in Antutu is 127,080. This is almost double to the last year's S6 and an impressively high score. Compared to the American Snapdragon version, which scores around 130,000, it's quite noticeable the graphics score is more capable in the Qualcomm processor, scoring around 40% more than this European version. However, the user experience and CPU are on the Exynos side, almost completely leveling this difference. We let the phone to cool down and ran Geekbench. The phone started at around 26 degrees Celsius again. Since this benchmark is much shorter, the phone only heats up to around 29 degrees Celsius. The final score is 2150 for single core performance and 6550 for multi core. Last year's S6 had 1500 and 5200 respectively, and this year's Snapdragon version appears to score better in single score performance at 2300, but then falls behind noticeably at multi-core performance at 5360. And two to benchmarks seem to corroborate this. Since I pre-ordered my phone, I got the Gear VR headset with it, and I must say I've been quite impressed with the immersive experience VR offers. I've had it on for hours, and I've noticed the phone gets quite hot. As we can see here, the phone is running again at around 36 degrees Celsius. Looks like this might be a thermal limit for throttling, so I decided to try something different. We could say I am simulating winter conditions here by putting the phone in a fridge. As we can see, the phone starts at a cool 7 degrees Celsius. Running on Tutu, the phone peaks up temperature much more slowly this time. The temperature peaks at just 16 degrees Celsius, so we definitely didn't reach any thermal limit. Final score? 132,700. A small 4% improvement, mostly in the graphics performance with a 10% boost. We ran the same test with Geekbench, but found no change in performance because that test is so much shorter and doesn't thermally stress the phone. I also tested the speed of the internal memory and my memory card. It is possible to move apps to the SD card and also save pictures and movies there, so it's important to know if it pays off to buy a fast memory card and how this will compare to the internal memory. Using Androbench we can see that the internal memory is just stunning. Sequential read at 480 MB per second and write at 130 MB per second is something no memory card will reach. Even random read at 82 megabytes per second is difficult to match by sequential read of SD cards. This tells us that apps moved to the SD card will need noticeably more to open. 
However, testing my SanDisk Extreme SD card, which reaches 7453 read-write speeds on my computer, performance is almost matched on the phone with 5740 read-write speeds. So you definitely should buy a high-speed U3 SD card to get the best performance out of your phone. Finally, let's take a look at charging. The phone was on and cooled down to 24 degrees before start. With the battery almost completely empty, the charger is pushing maximum current to the phone. After around 45 minutes, the phone got to 60% charge and the maximum temperature it reached was below 34 degrees. Looks like the phone gets warm during peak performance, but nothing to be worried about. The heat dissipation works well and the phone runs cooler than last year's version. That's all from me and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.